Hello friends, I'm Varun and welcome to my channel, IT with Varun to master the fundamentals. Today we'll understand a very important concept known as three lines of defense, which is critical in any organization. Why is it critical? Because it tells us the roles and responsibilities of three key layers in a company from a risk and control standpoint. So as I do in all my videos, let us understand the basics and increase our knowledge. But before I dive into this topic, I would like to spend a few minutes discussing a very important term which I just used. So if you heard me say from a risk and control standpoint, the term control, it's very important to understand this term from a risk and compliance standpoint because you will keep on hearing this term over and over in risk compliance and audit world. So what do you mean by a control? So let's first talk, you know, in basic English. So control is both a noun and a verb, but in the context of risk, audit and compliance, it is more like a noun, which means very simple stuff. It's either a benchmark or a standard or a certain way of doing something. Friends, please remember this term and this context as it is the most widely used term in risk, audit and compliance world. Now coming back to the topic of three lines of defense. Let's take a simple uh, example for comparison, you know, to just to visualize this, this idea a bit. So let's pick up a sport. Now every sport has different playing position, right? Um, let's pick up soccer. So soccer has forward, midfield and defender position. Why are they required? That provides more coverage and it get, you get better results in terms of how you cover the ground and how you can score the goal. In cricket, similarly, you have your batting, bowling and fielding, right? Again, the, the basic terms of how you understand a sport and everybody loves cricket. So I, I can very well understand you will be able to relate it easily on when we talk about that model versus the three lines of defense. Similarly, a company also needs some sort of safety net to mitigate the risk and achieve a strong control environment. Now let's talk about the three layers I've listed here one by one. So first line of defense is the operations team, which have a primary day-to-day -day responsibility to own and manage risk in their respective areas. And that's really important. So they, they take care of the risk in, in their respective areas. Let's take a small example. A sales and marketing team in an e-commerce company, right? Now they will be responsible for following the laid down procedures and guidance for performing their day-to-day -day job, which is a perfect example. Yes, they will have some SOPs, procedures in place which they need to follow and, and comply with them, right? That's a small example of what an operations team will look like. Second line of defense is the risk and compliance team. Their job is to identify risk in different areas across the company and draft the procedures and guidance to mitigate these risks and also ensure operations team, they are following these procedures and guidance. Like in our example, you know, let's go back to that example of, of sales and marketing. The procedures and guidance which the sales and marketing teams are supposed to follow, they are all drafted implemented and checked by risk and compliance teams, which is the core job of second line of defense. The third line of defense is the audit function. Now, the core job of an audit team, which is completely independent um, from a structure standpoint in a company, their job is to provide assurance that the first and second line of defense, they are doing what they're supposed to do. Now, going back to the example we, we had, the audit team will, will be responsible to verify the procedures and guidance defined by the risk and compliance teams. They're all appropriate and they're all being followed by the operations team, which in case in the case of our example, were the sales and the marketing teams. What I've done is I've created a separate video on explaining the difference between IT audit and IT compliance in detail. So please watch that video as well for an in-depth understanding. It will really help you understand 
what's the core difference between IT audit and IT compliance, which these two terms are being used interchangeably on a lot of occasions. I've also posted the link to that video in the description section of this video, um, just so that you can easily access it. Hope this video helped in understanding the three lines of defense model, which is very critical for any company. Thanks for listening as always. And for more such videos, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.